Experiencing a period of drawdown is one of the hardest things that we can go through as traders. But as you know, you cannot have the winners without the losers and eventually having a losing streak is going to be inevitable most of the time with trading. However, there are some tips and tricks that you can use and utilize into your trading to help you to deal with those periods of drawdown, to help you to bounce back from those losing streaks. And in this video, I'm going to share with you six tricks that you can use to help you to overcome those periods of drawdown and your trading losses. So if you're not already, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel below and let's dive straight into this video. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Emily and on Mindful Trading, I share my journey as I grow and develop as a trader. I've been trading for around about four years now. I started off trading stocks and now I focus mainly on trading the Forex market. And let me tell you now that I have had my fair share of trading losses and periods of drawdown. I've been there, I've been in that place where you want to just cry your eyes out, where you want to punch through a wall. Those trading emotions are real and they can really seriously affect you in a negative way if you are not careful and you do not deal with them effectively. Fortunately, because I've been trading for so many years now, I've managed to get through the worst of those experiences to that point where I'm able to manage them in a healthy way. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So if you are currently undergoing a period of drawdown or if you know what I'm talking about when I am talking about those trading losses, here are six ways to help you to overcome those in a positive way that focuses on protecting your all important trading accounts. Trick number one is to risk less per trade. If you do not already do this, I definitely advise you to think in percentages rather than currency when it comes to trading. Instead of thinking, I want to risk $100 of my account or £100 of my account, work it out in percentage terms. Most professional traders tend to risk only 1% to 2% of their overall account per trade. With my funded account with the 5 percenters, I tend to risk a lot less because it is a larger account size with a prop firm, so I tend to risk between 0.3 and 0.6% per trade. However, when I am undergoing and experiencing a losing streak, I tend to reduce that risk down so that I'm risking only 0.3% of my account per trade. Lowering the amount that you risk per trade and therefore lowering your potential losses is a great way to manage your account size, to reduce your risk and to help reduce your overall loss on the account. Until the market shifts in your favour, it's always best to focus on protecting and preserving your capital rather than trying to make quick wins. My second tip, if you don't already practice this, is to always use a stop loss order. This is something that I believe most traders should be doing regardless of their current trading performance. As using a stop loss order for trading is essential for correct risk management. If you're not familiar what a stop loss order is, a hard stop is an order that you put out when you get into a trade, which will close your position should the market move against you. It's like putting a safety net on your trade so that if you lose, it prevents the loss from getting out of control. For example, if you buy a position, you can automatically set a stop loss order which will sell at a certain level if price drops to that point. Other traders may prefer to use a mental stop loss which is very similar but they don't actually have that hard order set with their broker. They prefer to just keep an eye on the market and if it drops to that point then they will get out manually to protect their accounts. My third tip is to go to break even as soon as possible and this tip may apply more to you if you are a swing trader or if you tend to stay in positions longer but it can also apply to scalping as well. Going to break even as soon as possible during a trade is a brilliant way to manage your risk. In fact, this point is what inspired this whole video today because this week just gone, I had a trade where I was aiming for a larger target and I had the option of going to break even because price had moved so much into profit. So it was the correct thing to do, but I didn't do it. And as a result, it bounced back and stopped me out. And it reminded me of this really important fact when it comes to trading. When you are undergoing a chopping market and there's periods of drawdown, that going to break even can really help to protect your account. It might seem like going to break even makes a winner even harder to achieve. That's how I felt. But sometimes you have to just prioritize managing the risk and reducing potential losers rather than focusing on trying to win when the market is in a choppy phase. 
Trick number four is to take fewer trades and focus on quality over quantity. It can be really easy to slip into the trading emotion of revenge trading when you have experienced a series of losers. I know it can be difficult, I've been there myself, and sometimes it can be hard to fight those urges to just get back into the market, get back in and get back in. However, staying away from the market, watching on the sidelines, or simply reducing the number of active trades that you take in a trading period can really help you to find inner clarity and focus whilst also allowing the markets time to correct themselves. Sometimes it's just better to wait for the dust to settle before you make your move. And this leads on to my next point, which is to take A quality trades, focusing on quality over quantity. Having the patience to wait for the right setup can dramatically affect your chances of a winning trade, which will also reduce the possibility of further losers. And my final tip for you is to use a realistic prop firm. If you are at that level with your trading where you are thinking of trading with a proprietary firm, or if you are already trading with a prop firm, this is where you trade with the company, you trade their capital, and you share both the profits and the losses on that account. Then you want to make sure that you are using a realistic prop firm. What do I mean by that? Well, there are a lot of prop firms out there, and a lot of prop firms will give you high targets to achieve and not very much time to achieve them in. Not only can this be unrealistic when the markets are in a choppy phase, but it can also add a huge pressure to your level of trading performance. And it can also negatively affect your psychology and your mindset. Choosing a realistic prop firm such as the 5%ers can be really beneficial to help you to bounce back during those periods of drawdown without you feeling like you need to throw in the towel. The 5%ers give you plenty of time to achieve realistic targets over alternative prop firms that will just give you a short amount of time to hit large targets or whereby you need to use larger risk in order to hit those targets in the first place. I have created a separate video with some more information about the prop from the 5%ers so I'll include a link above and I have got a link in the description below if you want to go and check them out for yourselves. Meanwhile, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, which will really help me out to grow my channel. And please don't forget to subscribe if you're not already part of the channel, and I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.